You see it on the masks. They say, the Surgeon General of the United States said, do not buy masks. They, are, they will harm people if you buy the masks. Don't buy masks, then later you have to buy the masks. The disease will be spread on surfaces. The disease won't be spread on surfaces. The disease will be spread by asymptomatic people. The disease won't be spread by asymptomatic people, right? The list goes on and on. And actually, it gets to a distinction you talk about a lot, the distinction between, say, progressives or leftists and classical liberals, right? What, what the progressive project has been telling us for a hundred years now is forget about politics. Forget about debate and persuading your fellow citizens and engaging in questions and making ethical choices. Just pick some experts in lab coats. <laughs> they are going to find the indisputable answer. They're going to tell you all how to live your lives. And even if they contradict themselves the next day, we just have to do what they say. And I think what, what we're beginning to learn now is no, uh, we actually have a right to, to speak about this too. We're not just going to blindly follow you. This is The Rubin Report and I'm Dave Rubin. Don't forget to subscribe to that YouTube channel we've got over there and click the notification bell. And joining me today is the host of the Michael Knowles Show on The Daily Wire and a best-selling author, Michael Knowles. <laughs> Welcome to The Rubin Report. Dave, thank you for having me. How have we not done this before? I... Something doesn't seem right here. <laughs> like the universe is sort of lining up right now, but how did this not... Oh, I, I like that it took a pandemic for us to really do, and I don't, are we allowed to shake hands? I you don't wanna know shake if, hands? Can we? I'm gonna shake your hand on camera because you know this, yeah. I think, but the rest of the world doesn't know this. On Super Tuesday, which was, what was that? February, was that March? It's like March 2nd? It was a while ago. That was like right at the beginning of Corona. Yeah. Super Tuesday, I'm with you guys at the Daily Wire, just as Corona's bubbling up. You are the last hand that I shook. As I was walking out of there, I shake Shapiro's hand, I shake Clavin's hand, whoever else in the crew, and then I walk out of there. You're the last one that I shake. And then we went into lockdown the next day. So short of David, I have not touched another human I am being. the last one. And if yeah. you, according to the latest medical science, yeah. <laughs> if you ever get coronavirus, it's my fault, I think. Well, the best, part, sure. the best part of that is that then it turned out that I guess a few days before you were at, uh, where were you? you <laughs> it was were at CPAC. You were at CPAC Senator and it Trump. turned out somebody at CPAC shook somebody's hand. About, <laughs> and I'm like, man, I'm going to get coronavirus now because Knowles was at CPAC. That's right. He shook my hand. But yet we're both here and we're both healthy. We both survived. It is so funny because right after that, the reason that became a big story at CPAC is I was there with Senator Cruz and we were doing this, this live show. Yeah. We're in the green room and there were, there were a lot of important people in the administration. There was like Kellyanne Conway, it was Ronna McDaniel was the head of the GOP, all these in this very small room and one guy tested positive for coronavirus. So all of a sudden you have all these people locking down, yeah. quarantining for weeks and weeks, and I thought I've just ru ruined the Rubin Report because yeah. I'm the last guy that he touched. But not only the Rubin Report, if any of this had had yeah. the veracity that they told us it was gonna have, right. you would have taken out the Daily Wire, you would have <laughs> taken out half of Los Angeles, and yet we're all here. Well, because we found the cure. You know, we found the cure to coronavirus, which it turns out is nationwide race riots. Racism. I, yes, it's. I thought it might be hydroxychloroquine. I thought it could be. They maybe get a vaccine. Nope. Turns out, uh, race riots. That's the cure to the virus. Although you're being slightly sarcastic there, you know, we've had public officials that have said that. That yes. have literally said, yes. if we get the second wave of corona, it will not be because of the disease itself, it will be because of racism. This is what one of the health commissioners of New York City said. Not, not yeah. just one, yeah. there was this, this letter that came out a, a couple weeks ago, I think, it was about 1,200, over 1,200 public health officials who said, there are, there are riots, and they didn't yeah. say riot, they said there are protests going on peaceful. right now. Peaceful, peaceful, very, very peaceful, social justice protests against racism. Those should be encouraged from a public health perspective. But the protests that went on a few weeks before against the lockdowns, those must be discouraged because they are mostly white. And I don't, I, frankly, I don't even know if that's true. Yeah. And this was the ki kicker. They said, from our perspective as scientists, we know that white supremacy, which is totally a real thing, white supremacy is a public health threat that exacerbates coronavirus. This was a shock to me. I didn't, we don't know that much about the virus, but we do know that. How do you feel being a pundit in the stupidest time? <laughs> <laughs> I've actually, been thinking a lot about this. I think this is the best time
to be a pundit, to be in politics, because we've been living in this fiction for, for an, actually a number of years now, yeah. which is that there is science, right? And science with a capital S, trademark over the E, is you can't argue with science, science tells you what to do, we bow down and pay obeisance to the God of science. And what we're finding out is a lot of this science is not so certain. It's actually a little bit more political than all that. I mean, obviously in coronavirus, right. they've basically admitted it. Are you telling me that the WHO, the World Health Organization, <laughs> could potentially, occasionally, possibly be wrong about things? I would never want to contradict the Chinese Communist Party. We are on YouTube, but, I don't want to yes, you know, take I don't, us all out right exactly. now. Exactly, but, but this is the issue. But, but that sort of thing, where it's like, I mean, because we're so in the same world here, I yeah. mean, that we have to believe these people the second they say something, even though two weeks later they say the complete reverse right. related to masks or whatever it is, and then we are doing this on YouTube, and I'm sure they're going to suppress the views on this, but yeah. the simple truth is YouTube said you can't contradict the WHO, which contradicts itself all the time. Right. I mean, what, you, what the hell are we doing here? You see it on the masks. They say, the Surgeon General of the United States said, do not buy masks. <laughs> they, are, they will harm people if you buy the masks. Don't buy masks, then later you have to buy the masks. The disease will be spread on surfaces. The disease won't be spread on surfaces. The disease will be spread by asymptomatic people. The disease won't be spread by asymptomatic people, right? The list goes on and on. And actually, it gets to a distinction you talk about a lot, the distinction between, say, progressives or leftists and classical liberals, right? What, what the progressive project has been telling us for 100 years now is forget about politics. Forget about debate and persuading your fellow citizens and engaging in questions and making ethical choices. Just pick some experts in lab coats. <laughs> they are going to find the indisputable answer. They're going to tell you all how to live your lives. And even if they contradict themselves the next day, we just have to do what they say. And I think what we're beginning to learn now is, no, uh, we actually have a right to, to speak about this too. We're not just going to blindly follow you. What do you think the psychological underpinning of that is with progressives? Because I, I get it. I've thought a lot about this. I wrote about this. Like, what do you think it is about the progressive mind that they pretend they're anti-authoritarian all the yeah. time, and yet they love authoritarian voices, actually. All their policies are authoritarian. All the, the, every time there's a study that, that proves what they want, then that's the right study, and everybody else is, is the racist study or something like that. But do you think there is like a psychological reason to it? I do. I think it actually, it's, it's a philosophical and a psychological yeah. reason, and it goes back to Karl Marx, and it actually goes back to this idea of science. So if you go all the way back to the word science, science just refers to knowledge. It comes from the Latin word for knowing things, right? And yet now the word science has been minimized. It's been truncated into this little tiny aspect of material inquiry and empirical inquiry, right? So everything else that we, ha we have to say about knowledge is kicked out of that. And what Marx said was he discovered a science of history. Mm -hmm. And this is what progressives say, it's right there in the word progressive, is we're progressing towards something, it's inevitable. Barack Obama used to always quote Martin Luther King Jr. who would always say, the arc of the moral universe is long but it bends toward justice. Ba basically meaning we're inevitably hurtling toward this progressive utopia and you you can stand in the way for a little bit, but you're not really going to stop it. And so, and don't forget, history will judge you. And his, you'll be on the wrong side of history, right? All of this language basically turns politics into a science, and the reason it does that is so that you can't disagree with it. And that's been, you, the science is always, always right. You can never disagree with it. And what we're learning now is that was just an excuse. That was a facade to cover up their political choices. And so. I, I think the authoritarian impulse there comes because they know that we're going to paradise. They see the utopia right ahead of us. And so if you stand in the way of utopia, you can only be one of two things, really evil or extremely stupid. And either way, we shouldn't be listening to you. And the, the funny thing about this is they think the word utopia means the best place. But it doesn't mean that. The word actually means no place. It doesn't exist. And I think a lot of people are waking up to that. They, well, there's a semi-autonomous zone in Seattle that I think is, <laughs> is their utopia or right. whatever the hell is going on there. How old are you? If I'm you don't 30. mind me asking. I'm, you're a 30. lady never tells, but okay, I'm Okay, you're, you're a young fella <laughs> yeah. out there in the political world. And I always find it interesting when, when I meet younger conservatives, so especially now at college, when I meet younger conservatives, because I think... Yeah, at least, although I do think this is changing now, for at least a decade, yeah. really more than a decade, probably a couple decades, to be a young conservative was like, you're, you're just sort of this dorky, stuffy, whatever, you're a nerd, you, 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 know, you care about numbers, you don't know anything about culture, you're yeah. not funny, you don't like 
comedy or any of these things. Were you always a conservative? And how do you see that sort of changing right now? Because I really see it changing. At the I see it. I mean, I think we're we're yeah. in the midst of it changing yeah. pretty radically. I basically came out of the womb smoking cigars with parted hair, you know, wearing penny loafers. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.